Hi, I'm Rivis, and uh, I will tell you about Firefox OS and apps. How can you write apps for for Firefox stuff? So uh, I uh, I myself am uh, from uh, from Riga, Latvia, and I've been doing uh, localization of Firefox for a while. So I've been for a while with Firefox now, and uh, and at, at first a little uh, a little video about what Mozilla is because. Everything that I'm going to tell you is, is very important, uh, very dependent on what Mozilla is and what Mozilla stands on and um, on the background. So, a little video with the background. So um, a little um, little summary of, of the video. Um, Mozilla is a non-profit organization. Uh, they they are like a bunch of people that has come together to make web a better place, like fanatics and stuff like that. So uh, no no real profit. Just the, the goal is to make web a better place. And um, and the Firefox uh, was uh, was their first project when they turned this. Um, ecosystem of 99% uh, market share to one browser into what we have right now where we have competition and, and lots of new technologies and um, lots of innovation. So um, that was Mozilla back then. Uh, right now Mozilla is, is about uh, new things and code literacy is, um, is one very important thing. Like in this keynote speech uh, you heard that um, the stuff that people understand what web is and how to make new technologies, how, how to influence our digital age. It's very important and uh, like in Latvia we do this start IT uh, stuff and Mozilla does basically similar things with WebMaker. Uh, the, the, the idea behind the WebMaker is to make new WebMakers and that's, that's one of the Mozilla projects. Another is Persona. Um, Persona is, um, is a, in an initiative in an area of privacy. 
to improve privacy. Uh, and uh, what Persona does, Persona allows you to log into some site uh, using your um, credentials from other sites uh, or other services. Like right now, you can log in to some sites with your Facebook, with your Twitter, and, and with your um, like Gmail. Uh, but if you log in with your Facebook or your Twitter, you give some of your private information to that site. Okay. And um, that should not be so. You should have an option to just log into that site to authenticate you that you are you and not give them anything of your private information. And uh, Mozilla Persona is, is a project um, to do that. And uh, of course, Firefox OS. Um, Firefox OS uh, is... Um, <coughs> Firefox OS is, uh, is an initi initiative um, to fix uh, mobile ecosystem. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, the situation is much better than it was in the 90s, uh, when there was only one browser. Uh, with mobile um, devices, uh, we have more than one vendor. We have Google, we have uh, iPhone, we have Windows. But all those platforms, they have, um, they are, they're lacking something. They are controlled by uh, companies that have their own motives, and um, and they compete amongst themselves. So. Um, and in this competition, not always the person uh, wins or, or the, 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 uh, the thing that would benefit the most for the person, uh, not, not always is, is put first. Like one example is that if you have like iPhone and, and buy some expensive apps uh, on, on that iPhone, um, you are much less likely to move to another platform because you cannot take your apps with you. And, um, as a user, it would be much better for you to, to be able to move freely with all your apps to different platforms. That would give you, or, or that would send a signal to the, um, to the iPhones and Androids and, and, and people, uh, like manufacturers, uh, to make the best product available to you. Because you can at any time move to another uh, service or to another platform. Um, and we, in Latvia, we saw this with... Uh, uh, liberalization of uh, mobile phone numbers because before some years ago there was your, your number your phone number was tied to the operator and when and, it, and when it was untied the real competition began because you could move freely among operators and um, you didn't lose anything and um, and Mozilla would like to um, to gain market share um, to gain power to to force some Changes that would benefit people, and uh, one one of the uh, aspects of Firefox OS and Firefox devices, um, you must understand that it's for the right now is being developed for the developing market. Market. It's a operating system and device for people who will buy their first smartphone just right now, this year or, or next year. It's not the top of the line best best ever um, iPhone or Android or, or, or uh, Windows phone. It's the low end cheap phone for your grandmother, for your cousin, for someone who who doesn't want to spend all his salary on, on a phone, or maybe doesn't have that money because he lives in I don't know Brazil or or, or Peru or, or somewhere. And the Firefox OS phone will cost um, like sixty. British pounds or, or 80 dollars. So it's really, really cheap and you have to keep that in mind. And uh, marketplace. Um, one crucial aspect of Firefox phone will be its marketplace. But Firefox marketplace is much more than Firefox OS uh, marketplace. It is a marketplace that is available everywhere where there is Firefox. So. Um, if your app is on, on the Firefox marketplace, you can, or your users can install it on, uh, on desktop computers, on, on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Also, they can install on, on Firefox phone, and also uh, Android phones. So uh, by having one app, uh, you, you cover many, many platforms. And uh, for, for you as a developer, it's, um, it's cool. So. Um, what, what, is, uh, what is Firefox Marketplace apps? Um, it's web. Uh, it's uh, HTML, uh, JavaScript, and CSS. It's uh, all the 
things, all the tools that web developers use right now. It's jQuery, it's, it's I don't know, Angular, it's Compass, it's everything we heard in the first presentation, everything we will hear uh, today in, in this room. So, um, and a lot of people know how to write web. Um, they have their workflows, they have, they have their tools, um, they have some kind of libraries and, and modules and stuff written for the web. So uh, for the Firefox Marketplace, you can reuse all those uh, technologies, skills, everything. You can just put that in those uh, apps. Um, there are a few little things that you have to add to the, your existing knowledge. But uh, the basis or, or the huge bulk of it is, is, is web. And uh, one thing that you have to add is, is manifest files. Um, manifest file is, is a simple configuration JSON object that says the basics about your app. And uh, um, this is a very simple example of, uh, of, an, of a manifest file. Uh, I'll show you a bit uh, another example and explain what's in it uh, a bit later. And uh, the other part is, is uh, web APIs. Uh, Mozilla and other browser vendors, they have been working uh, to give web new capabilities. Um, like vibration. Uh, if the device supports vibration, right now from Firefox browser and Chrome browser, uh, you can uh, write vibrating websites. You can write websites that can vibrate if the device supports it. And that gives uh, you new capabilities. And uh, there are a lot of uh, web APIs, and all of them can be divided into um, two basic groups. One group is generally safe web APIs. Those are like vibration, screen, ori screen orientation, and stuff like that, that if some malicious hacker uh, gains access to those or, or gains control, then uh, he can do nothing bad to the user. And those are um, sort of freely available to all websites, to all apps, to everyone. And then there are those that are um, much more um, dangerous, like uh, user contacts, like payments. And um, those APIs are available all, only to the privileged apps. And for you to have your app, to have, for your app to have this privileged status, you have to submit it to the Firefox Marketplace Store. It will go through the review, and uh, when it's reviewed and, and when everything is okay, uh, then, uh, then your app is published and uh, your app can use that those uh, those more advanced APIs, and uh, yeah, and uh, APIs. Uh, some of them are available only on uh, Firefox Phone. Those are like um, like Phone and Web SMS because like only the, you need the, the phone back uh, backend for that. Um, some uh, are being standardized in uh, globally among browsers and. Uh, hopefully, in, in not too far future, will uh, will be supported by every major uh, browser. So um, that is web APIs. And um, right now, it's time for a demo. Um, there are a lot of things that can go wrong, and probably some will go wrong. So uh, be patient and um, believe me if I say that it actually works. Um, what I'll do, I'll, I'll show you uh, a template for the web app for Firefox Marketplace web app or uh, so-called open web app. Um, the template that you can use to, to write your own web apps. Uh, then I'll show uh, what I've done with the template. And I've done like nothing. Uh, I've just added it a bit or changed it a bit. And then, um, then, we'll, uh, then I'll show you the, 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 the app that has that been written. And um, the app will be hosted on GitHub page. Um, so, um, maybe I'll tell a bit about uh, the, like, you have your code and you host it on, on, uh, uh, on, on GitHub. And if you push your, uh, your code to the uh, different branch called uh, gh-pages, then that, um, that branch or that code is, is uh, hosted by GitHub. And you can, um, you can host your apps on GitHub and make them available to the public. So, um, let's get into this. Um, this is, um, if you, um, if you go to the, if you go to the GitHub and search for, um, for Mozilla Mortar, uh, you will find this, um, 
this template that um, that uh, that has uh, the manifest file. That's important to um, like describe your app. It has uh, like index file and then some um, some default CSS, and you just download it and then use it uh, use it the way you use your um, your code. Um, what I've done, um, I've, I've taken the, the that demo um, uh, demo template and um, and I've um, I've tweaked a bit. So um, the manifest file for um, for my app looks like this. Uh, it has um, it has the name and and the name is basically the only mandatory field for the for the app. Everything else is optional, but highly, uh, highly highly useful because if if your app doesn't have a description, then your those your your users will not know uh, what your app is about and will be less likely to to believe and to install your app. Uh, then this uh, this part this uh, section uh, of launch path. This describes the root path or or the the place of your app. Uh, on your server, um, my app is hosted on um, GitHub.io slash Hello World. So I add Hello World here. Uh, if your app is hosted on, uh, on on the root of your server, then you add just just one slash. Um, then there are some icons, um, different sizes and and different um, uh, different images for for uh, for each of the size. And here, um, from the template, I've added this 60-pixel um, icon. And 60-pixel um, icon is important for, for a Firefox phone. Because Fire, Firefox phone, uh, Firefox OS phones, they use 60-pixel icons on their, uh, on their dashboard. So um, if your app doesn't have 60-pixel icon, then your, um, it, it won't have an icon image on the, um, on the Firefox phone. Then there's info about the developer, uh, and then there's this path uh, part that um, that basically says that you can install this app from any domain, um, and uh, it's important for for my app to be installable from GitHub page. Uh, I could add here um, the domain name of of, uh, of my GitHub uh, pages account, so that would work as well. But I've added asterisk, so it's um, universal. Then. Um, then, uh, then the default thing in in index um, in the web like index file. Um, this is uh, this is the default template index file, um, and um, I've added just these uh, buttons. Uh, the first is alert. Uh, the second is an example of of uh, vibration API. Uh, if you click this button, your phone or Actually, your any device that supports vibration uh, will vibrate for 200 milliseconds. Then it will be still for 200 milliseconds, and then again vibrate for 200 milliseconds more. And if you open um, the URL that I'm going to show you in a bit uh, from any device that supports uh, vibration and, and click that button, your uh, device should vibrate. And um, it's not uh, this thing is available. For like websites, uh, it's not uh, not, necess not necessarily apps. You can use it in some creative browser games or, or something like that. And then uh, then this um, this line um, opens up uh, a um, wildcard conference web app uh, section of my demo. And um, in a, in a few short minutes, uh, we'll create a simple, very super simple web app for this conference. And, um, well, to do that, we go to the conference website. We go to the, uh, we'll go to this, and go to the, uh, we go to the conference website. Um, we look at it, we think what we, would like to show uh, on our app, and of course, of course, we decided we're going to show um, hashtag uh, tweets for the conference. So we click um, click the link. Um, here we see all the um, tweets, 
And um, to, use, to put those tweets into our uh, web app, uh, we click this icon and choose, uh, choose embed this search. And then um, Twitter gives us um, this uh, configuration screen where we can configure how we want to embed uh, those tweets on our, um, on our uh, website or our app. And uh, we'll just um, remove this because we want to see all the stuff from this conference. And um, yeah, something, something new appeared, but maybe that was just the uh, default stuff. So we click um, Create Widget, and Twitter gives us this, uh, this, piece, of, uh, this piece of code. And uh, we take this code and we copy it. And um, we copy it to the, to the wildcard. Um, like, like this code right here is, is the code that the Twitter gave me. So we just just take the bare bones uh, HTML file and, and add our uh, our um, our code in here, and our web app is ready. And um, this example is is to to convince maybe those of you who are uh, still doubting it that um, web is very very good platform for building stuff because a lot of stuff is already ready, it's ready made, you can just take it, mix it, use it and your uh, speed of development is very fast because to embed tweets you just use few simple clicks, uh, a little bit of configuration and you have your Twitter widget uh, and you don't have to, you don't have to do anything, uh, any coding yourself. Um, so that's our um, wildcard uh, section. Um, the, there's also, um, in this template, there's also some, um, some CSS and images, but uh, I'll skip that because it's pretty basic. Um, there's also some JavaScript, and uh, for JavaScript, uh, for JavaScript there is this, um, there is this, um, this piece of code. Um, this, this piece of code is also in the template, and it, uh, it provides the installation services for, uh, for your app uh, and the, to install uh, this uh, Firefox uh, Marketplace web app onto a device you basically call this function and pass, uh, the, um, pass uh, the URL to, for the manifest file and, um, yeah, and, uh, and, and then uh, the browser knows how to install the app so um, yeah let's go a bit back and um, and um, yeah, and um, this is the this is the web app uh, that I've created from the template. Um, I can show alert, of course, no big surprise. I can click vibrate. Um, nothing happened because my laptop is old and uh, it doesn't know how to vibrate, so nothing happened. Um, I can click um, the wildcard uh, section. And I get all the tweets. And then this is the app that I just made. Um, I'm not showing you this in, in real life demo uh, because GitHub pages take um, some 10 minutes for, for, the, for, the, for the content to update uh, after I commit. So if I would commit, then we would have to wait some, um, some 10 minutes for it to update. But um, if I would want to, some, to change something, uh, like add another hashtag or something, I just uh, edit the code and and commit it to the GitHub, to the GH, pa uh, GH Pages uh, branch. And uh, after 10 minutes, my web app is, is up and running and, uh, and everything is cool. So, um, and, uh, and, and now the interesting part, I can click the install button. Uh, if I click the install button on my uh, desktop Windows computer with Firefox installed, and this button will, will work only in Firefox, right now. Uh, if the other browser vendors uh, join the open web app movement and support open web apps, then this button will work on other uh, browsers. So uh, I click install, and um, well, hopefully the app is installed. And uh, if I go to the desktop, I see that uh, I have an icon for, um, for my Hello World app. And I can open it, and um, and it gives me um, this uh, this app as an app. Um, I can also vibrate and, and do stuff with it. 
Uh, and this way I can deploy uh, my apps to the, to the desktop um, computers. Um, now, uh, now it's time to move um, and uh, see a little um, how, it how it looks on, uh, on, uh, on phones. Um, <laughs> The fiber thing, it's supposed to work only from Firefox if it's open or from any browser? It, I guess it works also from Chrome, from any browser that supports <laughs> vibration. Um, well, alert is, says it works, but vibrating is being ignored. Okay, so uh, maybe you have to update <coughs> your Chrome or wait for some new update or, 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 or something, but... Uh, no, for Chrome. <laughs> Not now, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the part of the demo that might go wrong, so... Um, little, little bit of magic. And uh, I'll try to show you stuff from the phone. And luckily it works. So, um, um, this, is, uh, this is Firefox OS phone. Um, it's um, it has it says Firefox OS on it, and um, and yeah, and um, this is how it looks, and um, uh, when you open it up, um, you have you have a um, you have marketplace. It's upside down. So need to turn. It's upside down for you. Okay, some magic. <laughs> really magic. So, um, if my if my app would be com uh, submitted to the Firefox Marketplace, uh, I, I could install it from the Marketplace. Um, right now, it's it's just a demo app, and uh, if I don't want, I can uh, I can skip the the, the Marketplace uh, and and just go to the Firefox browser on the phone. And um, yeah, and I have uh, I have this uh, the same app. And um, I'll try to click vibrate here, and if you're really, really uh, quiet, and you are quiet, but you won't be quiet. Um, a little hack. Our laptop is going away. So, um, yeah, it vibrates. Um, <laughs> so, uh, this is the part that I can't prove you in any way. Uh, you just have to believe that it vibrated. And uh, of course, I can click install. Um, you can put it on a table and. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that. So, a um, little bit of magic. Too many magic. <laughs> but if I'm not a magician, <laughs> can I make a application for Firefox or anything? Of course. Um, yeah. And it doesn't install. Um, um, the, there is right now a little bug um, on the Firefox OS uh, development uh, platform um, that doesn't allow you to install app uh, if <laughs> to reinstall the app if the app is already installed. So that's why it didn't work. Uh, we'll try it again. Um, now I, I've deleted the app uh, from uh, from the Firefox phone, uh, and uh, and it should uh, and, and it should install this time. So I click. I click install it, it shows me the prompt of, um, of installation and I click OK and um, yeah and I have my app um, right here. So and I can I can launch it as a as a as an app and um, I can it vibrate and go to the um, tweet section and it works. And uh, now the the next uh, magical thing is uh, is this um, is this Android phone that I hope will not die on me. Um, check the Wi-Fi. Yeah, 
Um, so um, I, 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 I have this regular, um, regular uh, Android phone. I open up um, the Firefox browser on it. I, I go to the URL uh, that, that my app is hosted. Um, I open it up and I can click install here. And on Android phone as well, I, I get the prompt, I, I click install, uh, and it says that uh, on, on top that, yeah, everything is successful. And, um, and I get my Hello World, um, Hello World app on my Android phone as well. So it opens with this weird red thing and, uh, and it can vibrate. Yeah, so, um, so that is that. Um, now we'll switch back um, to the to this, and um, <coughs> yeah, uh, we'll switch back. Oh no, I click here. Yeah. Um, so uh, some um, some stuff for uh, for further reading. Uh, you can uh, you can go to the um, Firefox Marketplace uh, Developers Hub. You go to the Firefox Marketplace, uh, click on the Developers Hub um, link, and and you get this uh, this section <coughs> of uh, how to write apps. And there's a lots of uh, useful information. And one thing that I would like to recommend you is uh, is this reference apps section. Um, you open it, uh, and you have here um, apps that uh, are written for Firefox OS. They have their code on GitHub. Um, it's available. There are some developer um, documentation on on how they've written it and what they've thought when they wrote it. And, um, and there are uh, lots of useful examples for you to start writing new code. Like, uh, if you choose this app, then you can learn how to make in-app payments. Uh, and uh, that is the thing that I like about web. You can take what's already been made and uh, remake it to suit your needs. Uh, that's available like for open source in general, but uh, it applies here. Um, then um, the next part um, about uh, Hacks Mozilla um, site. Uh, here is a very good uh, post about uh, about Firefox OS Phone. They have a lot of videos uh, where the developers of Firefox OS Phone describe uh, how it's written, uh, what, what the kernel is, what are the layers of Firefox Phone uh, or, or, or Firefox OS itself. Uh, all the little nuances about uh, making web apps um, and everything about everything. This is another good uh, starting point for you to to write um, web apps. And then, of course, there is a Mozilla Developer Network uh, that has a lot of documentation uh, for um, for um, for um, for writing uh, web apps and. Um, that further reading section uh, and Mozilla, um, why, is, why, why I think it, that it is very good? Uh, it's good because Mozilla is open source, Mozilla is uh, community, it's non-profit, it's people for the people. Um, the documentation is out there, you have um, IRC channels where you can ask the people who write uh, stuff some help uh, or some other help. Uh, and um, yeah, and um, that's 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 cool. I think um, this is the thank you slide. Uh, you can see the um, the link for the presentation uh, to get other links. And um, now it's time for you to ask something or have some comments or or or, or something. I have a question. Sure. Uh... Please uh, tell us uh, how, uh, what are limitations for applications, uh, for Firefox applications. For instance, uh, how, um, how difficult it is to write such a, uh, for instance, a Sudoku game or GPS navigator? Uh, 
Uh, if you if you know how to write um, JavaScript, if you know how to work with uh, web technologies, then uh, if you can make your app as a website, as a web app, then there are no limitations. You everything that you can do, uh, you put in that phone. Uh, right now, I think that the problem uh, could be with the with the API support because not everything is uh, perfectly ready, uh, and uh, you have you have to take into account. Um, different, um, different, different aspects of web. Uh, if you write your apps correctly, then then everything is fine. Uh, if you write your apps just as you would like to write, then there might be some problems. And uh, the problems might be with the uh, that there are many different screen sizes, and you have to your app has to adjust to the screen size of each of the devices that it is uh, installed on. Uh, if you use adaptive, responsive. Uh, web uh, development techniques, then uh, everything will work just fine. Uh, but, um, yeah, um, maybe something about performance. If you write something super, super game, super graphics, that might be an issue. But uh, everything that's sort of simple should work out of the box and on all the platforms, on, also on, on, uh, on, on web. What is execution speed of uh, JavaScript? Uh uh, is it uh, comparable with C Sharp or C, C, C++? Uh, How, uh, is it uh, 10 times slower, 100 times slower? I, I cannot give you the exact number. It's Of course, it's slower, but uh, people write games uh, on, 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 in JavaScript, and people write stuff. It's possible to make stuff. And if your app is some, I don't know, business application that gives some data or, or collect some data, then the, the, the performance is, is not an issue for you. But the performance on web, uh, as a general, you have to take it into account. If, if you write something very performance, um, performance C, then, then uh, you have to test it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What do you like about this uh, Firefox OS and phone over Android or others? Uh, okay. Uh, I've been using Firefox OS phone for a week now, and uh, I must admit that my Android phone is a bit more expensive and a bit more better. But uh, if I if I had to spend uh, eighty dollars on a phone, I would really really consider Firefox OS phone. The thing that I think is the best on <coughs> Firefox phone uh, and better than anywhere else um, is that the it's. There is this um, limit app or, or usage app that shows how much data traffic have you used. Because if you buy cheap phone, uh, you are most likely uh, ca cautious or conscious about how much of the traffic you have been using. <coughs> so um, I'm not sure uh, what, what's on uh, what's available on, on, on iOS, but uh, anything that I've seen on Android um, is worse than uh, than this usage app. Um, I like that. This phone is sort of simple. There is right now there is nothing, uh, uh, nothing that would confuse me. Uh, maybe it's also a drawback right now because there are not that many um, cool features and the apps are are, are there are quite quite a few apps that uh, I like. Um, I would like to see more apps on on this phone, uh, but uh, if I would need to buy a phone for, for my mother or for my grandmother, uh, I would, I guess I would buy Firefox OS phone instead of some cheap and Android and I would not even consider iPhone or Windows phones because they are expensive and my grandmother would want to call and receive SMS. So that's my, um, that's my thinking. But the thing that I'm most excited about um, is the, the marketplace. Uh, because if you can have the web enabled marketplace, like marketplace that's available on all the devices. Uh, you write one app and, and it's everywhere. And one code base, one, one everything. Uh, that excites me the most. Yeah. I have uh, a number of questions. The first is... Uh, um, Choose the best one. No, I can't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, when I'm creating an app, for example, for Windows Phone, uh, I want to align it with native UI, right? Because 
it's obvious, yeah. Uh, and I want uh, my app uh, to be aligned with uh, Firefox OS as well. Is it any API for native like, I don't know, UI elements? Like yes. Uh, you have uh, for, uh, all the, like, everything that's in, in Firefox OS, it's open source. And you, okay. can, you yeah. can use the CSS, like for this button, uh, install or not install. Uh, if you put some, some CSS code that's, uh, like, you don't have okay, to put okay. the CSS code itself, you just classes for that, and it will work. And also and there are documentation for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. That's absolutely out there. And the second question is about selling statistics. Statistics on selling Firefox as devices. Is um, there any numbers? Because I, I haven't heard those numbers, but I also haven't looked for them. Uh, like the sale of Firefox or, or ZTE, uh, that's Chinese phone manufacturer. B1, B1 right? Uh, yeah, the phone that they uh, started selling on eBay a few months back, this is like super cutting edge. That's why it doesn't work as good as, like it's, it's cutting edge. Everything that's alpha level or, 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 or so it, it is a bit raw. You can use it, but some stuff misses. And also I, I haven't heard of those uh, statistics yet. And any plans to make Firefox OS devices more powerful in uh, regarding uh, hardware? Because right now it's a little yeah. bit slow, um, not because of the system, operating system, just because of hardware. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't heard of those plans, but I also haven't looked for them. Uh, there is this um, boot to Gecko that's, uh, yeah, no. that's, that's the... Like the Firefox OS kernel, it's, it's called boot to gecko and uh, that's some kind of modified Linux kernel. And there are lots of geeks out there that want to use stuff on their devices. My guess is that some of them will port that uh, Firefox OS kernel to some decently powerful device and it will be available for, for geeks uh, in on the devices. Times, in the times of Galaxy 2, uh, and boot to Gecko, not Firefox OS. Yes. Uh, there was uh, a way to install it to Galaxy 2, and it is right now, I guess. Uh, I think that it, it should be there. Uh, but um, one thing that I've definitely looked is uh, is this uh, section about uh, hacking uh, Firefox OS on on Mozilla Developer Network, and there is some stuff that I just didn't have time to to go through and then. Um, but I think that, that should be possible. Okay, thanks. Yep. Yeah, so if current target of uh, Firefox phone is to this cheap and their phones, uh, so what, what would be the motivation of application developers to port their applications to Firefox OS? As, as we typically know, the cheaper the phone, so the less likely the users are going to buy additional applications for that. So, or is, it sti is this niche still will remain as just for playground for hackers? Uh, um, well, um, I think that even though the phones are cheaper and users might not pay as much, they will want something. Uh, so if you write your app, uh, and uh, they might buy it. Uh, why? Wh why? Um, because they want to use stuff. Uh, well, but they uh, buy the phones which have Yeah, yeah, stuff. Of, of course. But. Uh, I don't think that anyone will write apps particularly for Firefox OS phone. What I think and what I hope for uh, is that people will write their apps, whatever the app is, uh, in this open web app uh, format. So you can launch your app uh, on, on iOS, on Android, and uh, at the same time... So, so that's not currently possible. So currently you have to use them phone gap or Titanium so to achieve that. Uh, so, so to write JavaScript applications and run on uh, different platforms? It, um, it depends on, on, on how you have written it. Uh, I think it's possible to launch your uh, JavaScript uh, app on uh, Android through Firefox uh, if it's uh, written properly. Uh, and then if you have your JavaScript app, uh, then you can put it into PhoneGap or Titanium and put, port it, no, not, not port it, but just run it on, on iOS devices. So um, if you use HTML and web technologies as a basis, 
then um, one, uh, you can port them or, or just run them on uh, on all the platforms that support these uh, phone gaps and, and, and titaniums. And the other hope is that uh, you might be able to run it um, natively, sort of natively, uh, through um, as, as a web app, as a Firefox uh, OS web app or, or, or something like that. And uh, one example that uh, I think of it is like the Evernote app. They have a web version, so you can access your uh, notes from the browser. Uh, and they have uh, Android and uh, iOS versions. Um, if they write uh, their web version uh, and take into account certain things, then it should be relatively, relatively easy to just launch their, the same code base, the same app, on uh, on devices through this, uh, but, but they, for example, they synchronize a lot of data to locally to phone. So what's what are the options for storing a lot of amount of There's data? Local storage API, yeah, which is a very limited amount of uh, space that you can oh. use in local storage. Again, so there is won't. a file API in some way. Anyway, it should be file API, or uh, SQL database, or something. Yeah, th th anyway, there's also there's file. also the file API. And the, I believe it's only iOS and Android, so it's that won't be available in the nearest future. Yeah? So to store some larger amounts of data natively using JavaScript APIs, or there are of course limitations. Uh, you, th th there's no silver bullet for everything. Uh, if the web would be that super awesome thing that gives only pluses and no cons, then uh, We'll all be happy and wouldn't be here because no problems for IT people. But um, there are issues. But uh, there's also, I, I I believe that there is great potential in this. And also, uh, a lot of those APIs are being standardized through W3C. Uh, and uh, the hope is that other browser vendors will support a lot of them. And uh, like vibration will work on Chrome, and and uh, and yeah, and it will be cool. Yes. Uh, so, uh, are there uh, many hardware producers who are using uh, Mozilla OS on their products or no? Uh, the ZTA, ZTE. Uh, the, uh, it is quite a uh, small market share, I, I guess. Um, Do you have any uh, forecasts or uh, something like prognosis for, uh, I don't know, Next few year, years, could uh, take uh, and why? Grow up. It's a lot of guessing, but uh, I think that um, this will will get some some traction. Um, and um, I don't know if if I would have to guess, then 10% market share in developing uh, countries in next three years. But that's just my guess. Or wish or something.